Hello everyone, it's time. Time for Amigo Aaron's weight loss wager. In case you've been living under a rock, this is the wager where I propose that I, Amigo Aaron, can lose 100 pounds by July, just in time for the Amigathon 2019. You're into the bargain, you sponsor me per pound. If you say a dime per pound, you give me a dime per pound. If you give me a dollar per pound, it's a dollar per pound. We'll add it all up. And in July, all those totals will be accumulated, and all the money you send will go directly to Children's Miracle Network charity. But here's the wager. If Amigo Aaron can't lose 100 pounds, I will give five American dollars per pound I miss to the Children's Miracle Network. So now, Boat, it's time for the official weigh-in. Let's do it. This is a official verified scale right here on the floor. No shenanigans. This is official weight. No shenanigans. I had a big breakfast, big lunch. I'm ready to go. So, Boat, I gotta step on this to get started. 381.4 That's 381 pounds. Boat, I propose that by July, I will be down to 281 pounds are all paid big time. Do we have a wager? We do. Let's do it. So, all of you folks out there in listener land, all you have to do is send an email to amigos and amigospodcast.com and put Aaron's weight loss wager in the subject line with your pledge, and we will tally that up here in July for Amigathon. Amiga. The first personal computer that gives you a creative edge. Hello everyone, welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. And today we're going to be talking about oh. Second Samurai. Ooh. But it's a new year, it's a new you. Well, it's not really. Uh, <laughs> Don't tell anyone. What's new in the world of Amiga news, Aaron? Let's summon we're the just, gamble we're train. We're going to jump right into the gamble train. Yeah, There's get on no, board. What about our witty banter? That, that was it. That's it? That's mm -hmm. all we get, Will? Okay, let me just fire up the gamble train here. So, we actually had a pretty good uh, news week, plus we skipped some stuff a couple weeks ago, so I'm going to jump right into it. So, um, <coughs> from our buddy Ear Rock. Remember mm. Earock, the no. CD32 man? Yes, I remember We have him a now. massive uh, 2018 Amiga collection. An Earock end of the year Amiga 32, CD32 special. Loaded with many a game. Uh, this was a uh, uh, story off of our other good buddies over at Indie Retro News. So, if you, again, this has been a great year to have a CD32. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, I... I'm in the process of gathering up these images to burn for one massive CD32 mega throwdown. That sounds That'll good to me. That'll be a lot of fun, yeah. So if you're into that sort of thing, if you got CD32, there's your there uh, there's your man. Next on the docket, uh, just uh, you know, from time to time, I like to uh, mill around on YouTube and look for wacky stuff. I never watch stuff. random videos on YouTube. I do. what a waste of time. And so I found a, a fellow. Uh, he has a, uh, I think we may have talked about this guy before, Amiga Retro Adventures. He burns and installs the 3.1.4 ROM upgrade. Wow. That right there, a killable offense, but he <laughs> goes for it. Is that a jumper that's attached? Do you have to wire a special wire to make I've, that work right? Listen, it's Amiga Retro Adventures. This guy's having an adventure. That's true. He's randomly throwing up jumpers. <laughs> that's an adventure. I don't know. You have to, you have to figure it's it out. It's an expensive watch, adventure. Watch Things get wrong. That's right. <laughs> it could be, as we saw on our Discord channel. Yeah. Um, now this is one. I I uh, we we broke this program. I think before anyone else were talking. I'd say about we broke it. this program on episode well, one. <laughs> but fair enough. But there's a little front end that's for your Amiga. It's for your actual Amiga, and it's called X Bench. Do you remember mm. X Bench? We've talked about it. We have two times. Yeah. And I found out about this before we even started the show, and I, I've always enjoyed it. And uh, I will give the fellow credit that does it. He, uh, you know, it takes him a while, but he does eventually upgrade it, and he has upgraded it to X Bench 1.1, the Christmas release, uh, more stable, more awesome, uh, great little program. I've always enjoyed this program. So you nice actually you in. run X Bench on I do. your 1200. I do. I, I do run X Bench on the 1200, and I like it. I, I've always liked it. So I, I highly recommend that if you've got an actual Amiga. 
and you want something to, that looks kind of fancy. I mean, you could take your Amiga and stick it in an arcade machine, hook this stuff to it, and you and no one would no one would know. And, you know, it's an awesome program until so, they've laid out run. That's true. <laughs> that's true. You know, uh, I like from time to time to uh, pitch or promote uh, fellow podcasters in their in their travels and their foray into podcasting. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm a big fan. Of Lafarius over at Amiga Rama. Yes, he had his Amiga Rama New Year's special Ooh. last week, and he was joined by Dan from Lemon Tube Amiga. He does the lemon video. Okay, and they actually play some stuff. And uh, Lafarius has actually worked with this guy in the past. Pretty interesting stuff. So, and I thought, man, what a chance to promote two of our favorite things: Lafarius' show and also Lemon. We love Lemon. Lemon don't we Amiga. Both? That is probably the most visited Amiga site on my computer. Yeah, Lemon, Lemon Amiga, and Hall of White. I wear those two sites mm-hmm. out. Indie Retro News, probably the yeah. top three sites for for uh, this sort of work. And it's a, it was a. I, I like Lafarius' stuff, and he's he's uh, completing his first year in the in the podcast game, and he's his show's really good. I listen to it every week, so great stuff there. Now. Here's a uh, here's an interesting uh, turn of events. Uh, our good friends over at Cloanto have updated their uh, trend setting, their industry standard Amiga Forever and C64 Forever software to uh, eight. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have they actually were kind enough to uh, to uh, set us up with some review uh, copies of this and. I have began going through it and and messing with it. I have found many uh, improvements, and I've found some things I don't like. And uh, uh, but that's the way software is. And I, I'd say at some point in the next couple of weeks, we'll probably either together or maybe just be by myself. We'll put together a uh, a look at this. That sounds great. You but know, I mean, the, if, you, if you, I'm sorry, go ahead. The the Amiga Forever, our last Amiga Forever video was wildly successful. One of the most popular videos ever on our channel. Yeah, so. we should have shot it in something higher than 320 <laughs> by 200, but we weren't a lot since then. Um, the, uh, the the Amiga Forever software. Let's just stop it because I'll admit that I have uh, when both of us have we've kind of smacked Colanto around uh, uh, occasionally for their uh, uh, you know getting these battles with people and the fact that they're still making money off these uh, kickstarts or whatever. That, which is the one thing I'll say about Cloanto. They do one thing, they do it very well, and they do and it's these two front end softwares, the C sixty four Forever and the Amiga Forever. I've got to tell you as uh, an American playing a lot of PAL games and European games, uh, I could not operate without Amiga Forever making it so much easier for me not have to fiddle with this stuff when I'm just in a hurry and I'm trying to play something. I'm sure you feel the same way. And uh, uh, it's a great piece of software. Uh, uh, and I don't think anyone uh, uh, would say otherwise. Mm-hmm. I mean, and I think the, I mean, I looked at the the uh, feature list for this new version. I was like, holy smokes. I mean, it was long. It added a ton of stuff. Now, I haven't tried the C64 Forever, the new version yet. But I'm guessing some of the changes from the Amiga side made it over. But it looks good, and look for a full, uh, drawn-out look at it sometime in probably the next month or so. All, all right, right. Yeah. all right. So, but I mean, check into it, and I mean, it's also real cheap too. It's a good, it's a good deal. They're offering a for the first time a lifetime upgrade. So whatever, uh, whatever new additions come out in the future, you can pay one flat fee now, and you can get it forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, let's move along. I'm going to come back to the uh, news on, from our site. Okay. Uh, oh, another article I picked up over any retro news again, and this is uh, kind of dovetails into one of our buddies. Uh, we have uh, a new game that's that's come out here called Trap Runner. Mm. It's the final version released, uh, and I, I, as luck would have it, uh, one of our good buddies uh, put up a video playing this. You want to talk about the? What you got? What we've got going on here, Bo? Yeah, so uh, Amigos contributor and uh, 2D, 3D rendering master Duncan Styles, who also designed the Amiga News banner that you see before you if you're watching the video version of this podcast, um, he has uploaded his own playthrough of this game, Trap Runner. So check it out on the Amigos Retro Gaming YouTube channel. Did you have a look at this yet? I had a, actually watched watched it, and it's. The game looks okay. Yeah. It looks pretty fun. Yeah. It's colorful. You know, mm-hmm. it looks nice. I'm a big fan. Colorful goes a long <laughs> way in my book. I know it does. You almost <laughs> always mention it, Boat. Now, you know, this is one of those stories, and uh, you can you can uh, make of it what you will. You know, it's one of those. Uh, so, have you ever heard of a fellow named Kanye West, Boat? I have heard of him before. Well, 
there's a long, long video interview with the man, and lo and behold, he got his musical career boosted up, started up, fired up, using an Amiga 500 and Audio Master. Mm. So if you're a Kanye fan, I, I'll be honest with you, I don't have, I don't really know a whole lot about Kanye. I don't know who he is, but I've listened to it. It yeah. all falls down. I know you're a big hip hop guy. I love hip hop. And uh, so, are you a fan of, of Mr. West? You here? know, I, you, you may be shocked to hear this, yeah. but I think he's probably one of the most talented, uh, you know, composers of this music out there. Mm -hmm. uh, I really think that he's he's really good. He's he's a little bit crazy, mm -hmm. but you know what? That's all right with me. I can deal with a little crazy. That's right. Right. And clearly, <laughs> I can so, deal with a little more than a little. <laughs> look at myself every day. So now let's let's take a look at what the. Uh, that wraps up the international news. Let's look at the localized Amigos site news as I scroll all the way back here. So, um, we'll talk about ARG real quick. Okay. This is the first thing on my list. That's right. Me and the Brentster are back again. and I see how you've linked to the website instead of the YouTube video. Yeah, I don't know what happened mm. there, but ignore that. <laughs> um, so... This week, we t we spun the wheel. We made the improbable deal, Boat. And we were playing games on the ever-popular... Really? Huh? Yeah. Ever-popular? Yeah. Ever <laughs> I think you left out an N there. The ever-popular mm -hmm. NEC mm -hmm. PC FX. As I said on the show, a, a system so cool, it didn't need words to describe it. Just <laughs> letters. Uh, I didn't know anything about this uh, system. I just heard the name. That's about it. Had you, you ever heard about this system before? Only, it? only you know, in in passing reference. I yeah. didn't know any of the games. Both games you talked about, uh, I never heard of. Yeah. And, uh, but it, it is interesting that this is much like the 3DO uh, cast its fortunes on the burgeoning uh, FMV game market. This was going all in with the anime. That's games. right. Yeah. It was, and that was its angle. So anyway, we play the uh, ever popular Super Power League FX. Again, I think you left out an N. <laughs> and <laughs> Kenshin Duji Zinku Vajura Fight. If that's if you're into that, mm -hmm. and, and he's not. And actually, one of those didn't stink. So you you figure it out. Um, let's talk about our uh, the good man, the dream catcher. Now, he had a couple offerings up this week. and uh, First of all, nothing goes down easier than, than when Dreamcatch uh, takes a good, old-fashioned look at the Vietnam War. Mm. And that's what he did here. Actually, <laughs> to, and more specifically, Platoon. Yeah. Uh, Ocean Software's Platoon. Of course, it's Ocean. Uh, did you ever see Platoon, Boat? I've, the only Vietnam War movie I've ever seen is uh, Full Metal Jacket. That's the only one you need to watch. And you only need to watch the first half of that. Yeah. The second mm. that's the, uh, that Ernie, uh, early Ernie dies, just turn it off. Mm. That's the best part of the whole film. I saw Platoon. It was high, well regarded when it came out. I never thought it was that good. There was a, there were a lot of uh, Vietnam War movies in the early eighties. Yeah, yeah, born on the Fourth of July. I think it was Hamburger Hill? I think that was another one. That was mm -hmm. I think that was Vietnam. Um, you know, it, um, I don't know how much Vietnam resonates with the rest of the world. Honestly, I'm sure the, the us and the French, uh, but uh, it was a pretty it was a you know pretty tumultuous time in America. Yeah, probably easily summed up in a side scrolling video game. Yeah, I mean, hey, <laughs> it's just like Rambo, right? Yeah. <laughs> you go kill now. So Dreamcatcher looks at that in his own inimitable style, and then uh, another tumultuous time in American history. The <laughs> the, the, the time of the gangsters. Dreamcatcher, he must have been on a roll this this uh, this month because now it's time to look at the Untouchables. Mm. Have you seen this film? I have not seen this before. This has, I believe this has, yes, there he is, Sean Connery mm. in it. Who does he play? I, you know, it's been so long since I see this, I don't remember anything about it. Okay. So I, I remember a scene where a guy gets whacked with a ball bat. Mm. And I think that's the movie where a baby carriage goes down a set of stairs, but I could be wrong. Okay. Uh, but uh, And I've not played the game either. So so once again, drink catch up at well under what we've played. Um, just in case you missed it, last week we had we did an insert disc two on retro gaming resolutions. And uh, I don't remember any of our resolutions. Oh, I do remember one that I'm going to actually, after this show, I will be rescinding one of my resolutions. <laughs> okay. So tune in live. One last little item, just because I was nosing around and I was reading some of these. Uh, our good buddy, who's, uh, 
I, I haven't talked to him for so long, but he ha uh, what he was our fellow that used to make Amigos magazine or Kickstart. Mm -hmm. And uh, Neil, Neil, Neil Mansell. yeah, Neil Mansell. Now I I thought Neil was a great guy. Yeah, and I remember when. Uh, uh, the, when I last talked to him, he was going through some, some real trouble. So hopefully, a shout out to Neil out there. We uh, we miss you, Neil. And you know, he did check in with me. I, don't, I can't remember if it was on Twitter or on email uh, just a couple weeks ago. Oh, and, great. And he said that uh, he said that he still uh, he misses the magazine and uh, and he he it was uh, I think we reviewed one of the games that he covered in depth. Yeah. Uh, and so yeah, Neil, uh, you're you're always welcome anytime you're able to return and uh, and revive Kickstart. Yeah, we love we love Neil, and he really worked hard. Him and Dream K, a lot of those guys are real, really busted their tail. And uh, they, well, like I said, this the magazine's evergreen. You can go back and check it anytime you want. That's what I happen to be doing. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, it's funny you should mention because I, I, I could have sworn he had written something on the game we're covering today, mm. which is the reason it prompted me. Mm -hmm. It's like I remember a long article, but I, I think I had the wrong game. But uh, it's still a fun magazine, uh, always good, and we do appreciate Neil for uh, doing that. You know, uh, you you can never escape the fold, Neil. You can <laughs> come back anytime you want. That's all I got, but you got any non gamble tron related news items to throw at the, the people? Uh, you know, I don't think so. You just, uh, you know, our, our YouTube channel uh, is always kicking with, uh, with, you know, there's new stuff coming out at least every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, but, uh, you know, with the, with the dunk. Uh, putting stuff up, and you never know when we're going to throw some some extra content up. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe. And yeah, we love it. I mean, I personally love it whenever like people in the Discord or whatever come out and do a video and put a great. I Brew Barracuda has done some. Of course, Dreamcatch has done some real wacky videos over the years. So it's always fun in a boat. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, one thing that I uh, I wanted to do in this episode, I wanted to put the news first because we got so much feedback that I wanted to put that second because, uh, you know, I wanted to kind of get the news out of the way, let the gamble train rumble on down the tracks after it drops us off at Feedback Station. This is feedback for the uh, big New Year's episode. That's right, All that's right. right. So, uh, I, first of all, I want to thank uh, Simon Blue Man, Geo's Lake. Thank you for the New Year's well wishes. Uh, we got several requests of people that want to sponsor you on the Amigo Aaron Weight Loss Challenge. Wager. Wager. Weight Loss Wager. Weight Loss Wager. I got to remember that alliteration. Um, including uh, Dazzly plus a bunch of folks on the Discord. Um, we got uh, feedback from Bernard Quinn, our newest Amigo supporter on Patreon. Bernard. Yeah. He says, just want to thank you for the podcast. Back in the 90s, I started gaming on the ST and later got my hands on an A500. I don't have an Amiga anymore, but enjoy reliving old memories through emulation. From a distance, some in the Amiga community can seem a little sectarian and hardcore, but your podcast is very accessible to the more casual person, and I really appreciate that. It makes my commute so much more enjoyable. Keep up the good work. Bernard from Ireland. I love it. Is it Bernard or Bernard? It's probably Bernard. Bernard. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, never get that, I never get that right. Yeah. Bernie is a great name. I wish more parents would name their kids Bernard just so they you could know, call We don't get Bernie. a lot of Bernards over here in, in, anymore. Not I think anymore. that's a name that's sort of like Agnes or, mm -hmm. or, or Myrtle. Yeah. Kind of went out. Yeah. yeah. Um, we got a message from Santar. Santar. <laughs> wow. When Santar sends you a message, you better pay attention. I don't know who that is. It sounds like some kind of weird alien. It might be. He says, Happy New Year. Thanks for all the great shows every week. This one was no exception. Lots of funny and interesting predictions this year. Fingers crossed Boat doesn't get too lost in Ireland or Brent might start his coup. Here's to another full year of Amigos shenanigans. What would you think if Brent you tried to usurp your position? Or because he, in fact, in, as, as Santar predicted, <laughs> there could be a Brent appearance in yonder chair while you're gone. That's true. That's true. And that could be it for you. Well, I mean. You had a good run. I did. I had a good run. It's, it's kind of like death. You know, it, when it comes, it comes. Let me tell you something. There's a 0% chance. There's two things I can't take more than once in a week. You're singing and a, a show with Brent. There's a 0% chance that that will happen. Uh, Gary James sent in a message. Uh, Gary James says, Love Quest for Gary. the Rings still in development. Oh, yes. Look for it in the coming year. So Love thanks. It. Thanks for your Gary. message, Gary. Thanks for checking in with us. Gary's our Odyssey 2 man. Yeah. Who's yeah. done tremendous work. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We got a message from our favorite professor, Roland Burke, Dr. Roland Burke. They say he rolled and... He, he, he sent us a, a long message describing his holiday activities. He says that he procured a vintage paleontologist Barbie for a young relative uh, via a JFK-type approach of pay any cost, bear any burden. 
in that auction. You know what that means? He spent he spent professor money. That's on that right. Doll. That's right. Uh, he says he's thinking of becoming an AGSC member, an Amigos Game Selection Committee member. Um, and he says uh, he he would love it if we would look at more arcade ports, more license titles, more flight sims. And he gives us a whole bunch of examples. Um, Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is one of his examples Knights of the Sky? Um, I did not list all of those examples oh here God. due to paper shortage. For, forward the email. But, I'll yeah. be in touch with you, Professor. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and he says that he is getting ready to teach a new course. He's teaching uh, a U.S. post-war history course. He said he, the last time he taught it, he did it through the prism of Andy Warhol. Which is an Amiga it's a connection. Wacky prism right yeah, there. and he says, but this is a rather more proximate figure, which seems to invite more enrollments. So he might have dropped that angle. Um, and he says um, he very much enjoyed the Christmas and New Year reflections and the excursions on the Atari ST, while deeply provocative, at a certain friction with Mr. Aaron. With all the best wishes and many thanks for your work, and to the wider team, Mr. Aaron and Master Brent, Roland Burke. Thank so, you. Thank yeah. you. I like it, Professor. Professor. The professor. I like it. All right, Aaron. That concludes the feedback. That was, that was a pretty decent amount of feedback yeah. there. Now, I've worn my uh, kendo attire. You, have, you don't have the sword here. Well, I, you know, I was thinking Thank about God. I was thinking about draping the sword across well, see, the back. It makes but, sense for you not to have the sword, yeah. you see, because at some point the sword might float down. <laughs> well, that's what I was thinking. If I mounted it to the back and I could pretend like I was floating down to grab it, because we're talking about Second Samurai. This is Second Samurai <laughs> ill-prepared for this particular adventure. <laughs> Just went out in his outfit without any, without any combat stuff. <laughs> you know, let's talk. Now, before we begin this, did you ever play this game? Are you, or have you ever been um, <laughs> a communist? Yeah, I didn't. I never heard of this game. I'd heard of it, but I hadn't. I thought I'd played it. This is another one. I'd never played this game, mm. so I, bear that in mind as we go forward. So, Second Samurai. This came out in '93. And it was developed by an outfit called Vivid Image. Uh, we'll get into them a little bit later. Uh, they didn't do a ton for the Amiga. They did First Samurai. They did Hammer Fist, Street Racer, and Time Machine. That's their only credited games on the, on the Amiga. Published by Psygnosis, enough said. They, they knew what they were doing. They always could pick a winner. Uh, this came on three discs, and it had one or two people simultaneous play. Pretty Ooh, good. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, so... Uh, this was now. This gets a little fuzzy here, so bear with me. Now, um, I had, I could not play this on my Amiga, and I think I found out why. And I know you had told me you had a little bit of trouble too. Um, <coughs> there's a EC and an OC, ACS OCS version of this. Now, uh, my uh, WHD load had a AGA version of this. Right listing. there, this is you know a dual release AGA well, no. and ACS. Yes. No, no, hold on, hear me out here. I I'll looked into. You. I looked into this. Okay. If you look on Lemon or Hall of White or anywhere, there is no listing for an AGA version. But apparently, there was a uh, post-release patch or hack that did something to provide some sort of AGA stuff. Well, that, that does make sense because as far as I could tell, playing both back-to-back -back repeatedly, yeah. the only thing that's different in the AGA version is the title music. The uh, uh, I looked into this as... I, I really tried to find the... Sky, you know, dream catcher I'm not. So, I mean, he, this guy, he finds everything. I, I looked all over and could not find any definitive word on what in God's name was going on with the uh, versions. I finally got AGA to work after some uh, uh, cajoling and messing around on Amiga Forever, but I could, and I also read that the uh, AGA patched version would not work on an NTSC machine. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Again, Makes your sense. mileage may vary. I mean, it almost certainly will vary. But. And before we go any further, I want to thank Duncan Styles for providing the gameplay video for this uh, for this particular game. Um, he did much much better than I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, anyway, the, all that in mind. Uh, Boy, you really undersold, uh, no-sold Duncan's contribution. No, here. Duncan's awesome. He records a 45-minute gameplay video. You're like, yeah, yeah, Well, no, but you say he did better than you. That's what I no-sold. Mm. Of course he did. You're you. Just because you wear a gi top doesn't mean you're a ninja, you know what I'm saying? What? Or a samurai. Everybody so, knows that's not true. I mean, if I wear this shirt, doesn't mean I'm Lionheart. I'm not that cool. Well, you're... What's his name? Vladin? It doesn't matter. Lionheart is Lionheart, his name. Yeah. Lion First H. name Lion. Lion P. Hart. <laughs> Second name's that period. So, Third name's T. <laughs> um, so here, so that much that takes care of the graphics section. So what do you got here with Second Samurai? Now the story for this 
is, guess what it is, Boat? It's a little wacky. It is a lot wacky. All right. So, uh, now, I guess I should ask this before we go forward. Did you or have you ever played First Samurai? No. I haven't either and didn't even look at it. All right. I <laughs> you felt, know, I, I planned to at some point, and I just never did. You know, I just felt like I shouldn't. We, they told us to look at Second Samurai, and so I don't want to go ahead and look at First Samurai because it might come up you later. You never know, right. So, I, but I did get the backstory. So this is straight from the manual here. At the end of the first samurai, the demon king was uh, able to flee back in time to ancient Japan. So our hero, that's a samurai, uh, follows him back in time and has ten levels awaiting him. Unlike the original, each world is split into sub-levels with a boss at the end of each one. So that's pretty much what you're looking at here. You're going after this guy to drop him. Mm -hmm. Enough said. So, right. I mean, Roy, how many story do you need? You're a samurai. You go kill now. And kill you will. So, this game is uh, uh, a, let's go with uh, uh, combat platformer with puzzle elements. Many, many puzzle elements. Um, you play a samurai, and if you, uh, if you play two-player, you play two samurais. And your job is to get through these levels, get to the uh, end bosses at the sub levels, and then beat the level, uh, and then beat eventually beat the the main boss of that mm -hmm. level. So, what does this game have in it? It has a lot of bosses, a lot. It's got a lot of varied levels, and it's got a lot of uh, uh, interesting gameplay elements. Now, uh, let's talk about the controls before we get too far in. Let's but they, do it. They're very uh, uh, they're very important to the game. You've got your joystick and you've got your one button. Uh, Second Samurai can pick up multiple items, Boat, and use them. He's got a lot of pockets. He, he does. He's got a big fu pu puffy suit. <laughs> you can put a lot of junk in there. And some stuff just floats around. So you can pick up daggers. You can pick up this like magical thing that sort of like is a screen clearing explosion. Smart bomb. That's right. Uh, he can pick up a, a additional sword, samurai swords, and he can pick up these like heat-seeking skulls, basically, or, like they go after a mm -hmm. guy. So this guy can pick up a lot of stuff. Now the way you, the way you select these, and I'll have to admit, I had to actually call you to confirm, explain to the folks the how the setup is for changing these weapons. You you basically okay. So th this is. A yet another take on how to deal with a one-button control right. setup. At, at this time in the Amiga's life, uh, there were tons of games coming out on other platforms that had the benefit of having two buttons, and developers for the Amiga were like, how can we replicate that experience with the keyboard? So what they've done in this game is you, you pick up weapons uh, as normal. You just sort of you pick them up, uh, unless we're talking about the purple globes, which are another thing. Yeah. Um, but you select your weapon with the shift key. So far, so good. Yeah. Where things really get weird is that you select the weapon that you want where you, you, you do something other than your main attack by holding down the button longer. And this is always precarious because sometimes you will hold down the button a fraction of a second too long and accidentally select your main or select the item that you want to use. How many accidental explosions did you cause? Oh, in this many, game? many, I'd many. I'd be like, no. Yeah. And um, a weird thing about the items in this game is that, like, when you pick up one of the spell books, either the book that gives you the sword or the book that gives you the uh, smart bomb, there's a number that appears beside of it. It says one above it in your item screen. It makes you think that you can pick up more than one because there's a number, but you can't. Mm -hmm. So I spent a good deal of time wondering about that. Um, there's also orbs that you can pick up, and well, you don't really pick them up. You, you smash them. Yeah, yeah, you stand on top of it and you push down the button, and it's they act like warps so that you can warp into a hidden area, and that's kind of neat. Yeah, it is. It's really neat. Uh, so you basically your guy has two different sort of... Uh, attack sets of stuff when he's armed and when he's unarmed. Uh, when he's unarmed, he does just a series of punches and kicks, uh, you know, what you would expect. And when, he, and when he's armed, he's got, he does sword stuff. He can sword up, down, sideways. Yeah, and the, the sorting in this game I thought was very good. And looks um, very slick yeah. as well. It has the same kind of um, reversal effect that your whip does in Castlevania, where if you have an enemy behind you, you actually get some reverse travel as you swing the sword back and forward and you can knock out enemies. Uh, you can swing the sword in all the different directions, and it's very well animated. Yeah. So this is not your Lionheart sword control scheme here. Well, Lionheart, I, I will admit, I, if this guy, if Lionheart moved like this guy, I'd be laughing. It he would be great. Would. It would be a great game. So, 
uh, we mentioned what some of the things you could pick up. You've got a yellow spell book that gives you a sword. A red spell book gives you uh, the big bomb. Mm-hmm. Then there's a green spell book. I don't know if I ever saw the green one. It gives you an invulnerability. Uh, then you've got uh, the daggers. You've got you can pick like little like uh, little bombs you can throw, which I never got far enough to get those. And the skull. And then you can also get uh, stuff that gives you health. Apple, roast chicken. Mm-hmm. They were popular. Roast Absolutely. chicken that just hangs in, in the sky. <laughs> Uh, a regeneration potion, and then most everything else you just smash or generally jack up. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much a long short of it. So, and I should also mention before I forget, when you play two players, actually the two player option, I'm sad I didn't get to play this because it looks like it would have been a lot of fun. I watched a video of a guy playing it, but I uh, didn't get to play it with uh, with Boat, unfortunately. Might be a fun thing to do during a meathon next We should, year. yeah. Um, but uh, you've got three modes of two-player action. All right, it's, you're both playing simultaneously, but you can have it on where it's you're friendly, where you don't hit each other. You don't mm-hmm. hurt each other when you hit each other. Then there's one where you hit each other and you can stun the other guy, but you don't necessarily do any damage. And then there's screw you. Yeah, I'm going to damage the crap out Sword of you. Sword right through the gut. You know, so that's the basics. Let's talk about the actual game. Now, this game is real funny for me. And I'm, I'm real interested to hear what you thought about it because we almost talked about this on the phone the other night because I was, it was, I was trying to figure out what to make of this game. You never called me before a show, and you called and you wanted to talk about it. Yeah. Um, the the guys that made this game, well, yeah, I appreciate you on that road. The guy, as I mentioned, the guys that made this are from Vivid Image. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, Vivid Image, as I mentioned, then I have a, a, an illustrious career, but they were based in uh, London. It, it says here Harrow, London, uh, and the uh, guys that were here came over from making um, Last Ninja 2. That was their member. Remember, we reviewed Oh, yeah. We had a look at Last Ninja 2. And so, in some ways, this almost seems like a, uh, a, the natural progression of, of, of Last Ninja 2 in, mm-hmm. a, in some in ways. In a way. I mean, by that, I mean, it's just like it's a short, it's a guy that runs around. There's, there's a lot of territory here. I mean, it's not the same kind of game. But, I mean, I can understand why those guys were involved. Right. Uh, they really didn't do much. Let's get this. Um, they made. <laughs> they're one of the few companies to make a game for the Conix multi system. I don't know if you're familiar with the Conix. I, I, I'm only familiar with it by sheer accident. The Conix was this uh, highly touted uh, console that was being developed. I think it was being developed in the UK, and it was going to have like all this like a steering wheel attachment, all this crazy stuff. Really? I mean, like a. Did it look like like a Coleco Telstar? I don't remember. I don't remember what it looked like. The only reason I know about it was I downloaded this video to play in our arcade mm-hmm. just on repeat. Right. And one of the commercials, and it was like a half-hour infomercial for the Conix. Oh, okay. Well, the Conix was never released. Mm-hmm. It, just, it fizzled. Anyway, uh, uh, Vivid made a game for the Conix. And, it, and of course, it never, they never released it, you know. They also made a game, stupidly, for the uh, Commodore 64 GS, which mm. was the Commodore 64 console, which also fizzled. So these guys just picked some bad, made some bad choices. Yeah. And they also made Street Racer, and they did Scars. If well, you, you know, Scars. in a way... I can see why you do that because you got to think maybe these guys looked at the C64GS and said, hey, nobody's going to develop for this thing. Let's get out of the gate with one of the only releases so anybody that buys one, is go- we're going to have one. Yeah. They had, a, they had a Mario Kart clone called Street Racer, which we, of course we know about that. And Ubisoft released that on, on, on the Amiga. And it, but when they they had another game called Scars that came out for the PlayStation. It was a, uh, I think it was a racing game. I remember this vaguely and it didn't do well. And basically they got shut down. Hmm. <laughs> it was into them. Uh, I think they did one more Game Boy Advance game. So, there's a pedigree of a martial arts style action game yeah. before this one came out. So, when we started playing this and I was sitting there running around, I had no sword, I had no way to get a sword, and you were continuously attacked by monsters. Uh, they, and the monsters were goofy looking too. In that first level, they looked almost like... Uh, they look like tumbleweeds with arms, mm-hmm. basically. They, they come look at like you. some sort of weird Muppet. Are creature. those the stupidest monsters in this game? <laughs> yes, they are. They're the at least they got them out of the way. But I mean, know? why would you put those as your stu- <laughs> as the monster? The first thing you see, these stupid looking. I mean, it looked stupid. Yeah. So I was so irritated, and then I so I went and watched the playthrough. Like, how do I get my sword? I don't mm-hmm. have a sword. And I watched the playthrough, and all of a sudden I see a sword float by the guy. I'm like, <laughs> what's happening? What's happening? So I finally downloaded the docs. And read them. I was like, okay, got the sword. Could get because you can't even get into ground until you get the sword at first right. level. And so once I got that out of the way, I really started to appreciate this game and what they did. And what they did here was uh, with and you know I love Lionheart. I hold it in very high regard. And, and part of the reason I love it is because the level design. 
I think they this has some of the best level design and variety of any game of this type I think I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It is absolutely astounding the amount of uh, clever puzzles, the amount of hidden elements, uh, the amount of uh, interesting places you go in this. Uh, it is, I mean, it is remarkable. It is totally remarkable. Uh, I got as far as I could, which I believe I got to the second or third boss. Uh, I, I, the, uh, I'm trying to think which guy it was. I've beat, and I, I skipped around too, so I got to see most yeah, of the Yeah, there's bosses. level codes available. And... Right, it's a level code game. And the, the level of bosses in this is, I mean, they've got every sort of wacky yeah. thing. Yeah, and they're, they're well done. You can tell they did. A lot of, a lot of these types of games kind of skimp on the bosses. Yeah, this not is not this one of those games. I don't think I've played any game, and I'm, I'm trying to go play any game on any machine, short of like a Monster Hunter game, that had this many different bosses. Yeah, I mean, I agree. all different, all very clever. Uh, just a couple that spring to mind. Uh, there, there's one. There's one guy that you fight that's a looks like almost like a Stonehenge head, mm-hmm. or I mean, an Easter Island head. Right. And he's got like eyes. Yeah. And, his, he, and you have yeah. to keep blowing him down, though lower, lower mm-hmm. in the dirt. Mm-hmm. He was cool. There are several varieties. There's dragon. There's these big long worm guys. that are in it. You fight bugs. You fight machines. You fight. Uh, there's a there's a, a level where it almost it's almost like you're fighting like asteroids or something coming at you. There's a level where you uh, uh, you get a jet pack, and so it becomes like a shooter. Right, right. And I mean, and it's it's not a, uh, you know, some people attack this crap on. I mean, this is a, I played that, and it was pretty solid, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, it has a ton of variety. Uh, you've got a life bar. Uh, I think I like it to hold seven hearts, you can, and that'll, that'll go up and down. Uh, you know, your health goes up and down on that. Um, it's, I mean, they didn't reinvent the wheel with what they did, but... What they actually the content of this game makes it awesome. Now, is this the perfect game? Well, let me look before I get into my finals. What do you think about it? You know, having and how far did you end up getting in it? I share a lot of the same uh, thoughts with you. I, I thought that this the game's level design was was fantastic. Um, you know, there is vertical elements, but they don't go on and on forever. It was always clear to me where I needed to go next. You know, you're always sort of working your way right. Um, I think that or the up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's always up and right. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I felt like the animation in this game was, I mean, some of the best animation I've seen on any platformer. When you're jumping and you're swinging the sword, I mean, you really feel powerful. Um, the sword animates. Well, you know, all of the different ways you swing the sword. They could have cheated on that so much and just sort of crapped out on, but they didn't. Um, I thought that the only thing that was sort of kind of halfway done, in my opinion, was the background, like the very, very back background, which is basically just a moon that's, you know, like it's it's an animated background, but it's animated in probably the laziest way imaginable. I think the guy from a BC kid was like, yeah, I mean, <laughs> hey, that shot at this. I mean, I'm really, I don't, you always see that, you know, it's not like that on every level. Right. And also, when you're underground, you don't see it. I mean, it's, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, some levels, there's there levels, there are like weird faces in the mountains and stuff. It's yeah. Like, and I will say that they do a good job of, yeah, uh, you never get confused about what objects are in the background and what objects are in the foreground. Um, like you said, the bosses are very well done. The puzzle elements are cool. Um, the biggest issues that I have with this game is that number one, the number one with a bullet, you need to have your sword all the time in this game. The, yeah, that's. I, the, the, I mean, that's, I understand. That's I understand they want to make the sword an upgrade. But the sword makes you so much more powerful, and it makes the game so much easier. Because this game is difficult; it's not an easy game. I had to beat the first boss with no sword. Mm-hmm. Did yeah. you have? Did you get to? I got. I ran. My sword went out as I was fighting. It's just like a dragon thing, and so and I was sitting there punching, kicking this thing. I was like, my god, it's yeah. gonna take forever. Yeah. I beat him, but my god. So you know, if if I could change only one thing about this game, it would be that. Um, I thought that the you know the. Everything else, um, you know, the, the way that you get your sword is kind of lame, how it sort of floats down from above instead of you just getting it. Um, but again, you know, it's, your guy a, does talk. It's, a, it's a spell book, you know, all that stuff. Um, one thing that I thought was interesting was that the, if you read in the docs, it says you need to make sure you turn your Amiga off 30 seconds before loading it to prevent you getting a virus. You well, want to you want to explain that to me? As I've always been told, that gives your the RAM time to de-energize and clear. Mm. So that how does that prevent you from getting a virus? 
Well, because if there's something memory resident in your machine that could get on a disc, that's what I, that's a context okay. I always okay. heard. Okay. Yeah, I, I I've never seen that in, a, in an Amiga manual before. Yeah. Really, that's the first time I've ever. That might be the earliest mention of the word virus I've ever seen in computer literature. Yeah, so. we had them. They they were yeah. there. Uh, I thought so much of this game was so clever. There was so much here. I was like, man, I, I know I'm not going to remember to talk about this. There were there was a fight with a giant skull. We had to drop a thing on it. There's a fight with a there's a skeleton with a shotgun that you've got to drop this weight on. There's a bit where you have to use magnets to move these bridges. There's another bit where you have to pick up another thing. The samurai can pick stuff up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you'll pick up big rocks and move them, jump up on top of. Them. They've also mm-hmm. got these floating platforms that are like have like helicopter blades in the bottom. Yeah. So you can fly around. You're with moving them. idols to unlock things. You're, yeah, you're yeah. physically carrying stuff around. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's <laughs> this reminds me of like. This is the kind of gameplay you want with your Shadow of the Beast or something. Absolutely. You know, do you know what I'm saying? If Shadow of the Beast would have had a gameplay like this, then it it would have been, well, it would have been a different world. I mean, these guys took, I mean, we often complain about uh, level design mm-hmm. on this show. Uh, because a lot of these games, they put together the basic ingredients of a platformer, and then they, and then they just kind of put the levels out there secondarily. This is a game, in my opinion... And having played the levels I did, and again, I did cheat to get most of them because I couldn't get there. I, I did better than I thought. But this is a game that has that is easily, far and away, the best level design, some of the best levels I've ever seen on any platform. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you watch this show for any length of time, I don't say that lightly. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is one of the most impressive games I've ever played. And I, I, I don't say that lightly either. Uh, if the only thing that holds it back for me, <clears throat> and you you hit the nail on the head, uh, and the fact that this has multiplayer, it really is amazing. I'm yeah. dying to try that. Yeah. The fact that you don't always have your sword is a real hassle. Mm-hmm. The controls, uh, having to use that the keyboard to get to some of those controls and that long button push, mm-hmm. that's a hassle. If I mean, you're reaching forward to the keyboard anyway. So they just sort of had like shift to select the weapon you want and Z to get the weapon. I just know? think there could have been a better way to implement it. Now, uh, uh, there is a version of this, and I don't know if you've ever played this. I'm sure you know about it. There's a version of this on the Genesis, yes, the Mega Drive. I, I would like to talk about that. Go ahead. Because please. I played it. Okay, good. Because I didn't get to play it. I just watched video. Talk about it. So please. I was expecting this to be like a lot. You know, where yeah. you play the Amiga version, you're like, wow, this is really cool. And then you play the Genesis version, you're like, oh, this is a lot better. This was not the case on the Genesis version. The Genesis version was terrible. Really? Um, so this this game, you start out and you're in caveman times, okay? For some reason, uh, you, you start out and you're battling these monkeys and you're battling uh, these uh, other cavemen. It has but, a yeah. more, it's more... Um, it's got a time travel gimmick that's more pronounced. Yeah, than this yeah. Um, the level design was not very good. Um, I thought that your guy didn't look as cool. Um, I was not impressed with the Genesis version at all. So I can say with full uh, confidence and joy that the Amiga wins uh, on Second Samurai for sure. I didn't play the Genesis version, but I will say this: the good news is, um, and it was it was fairly warmly received. It wasn't, I mean, on the Genesis. Uh, but, it, of course, there was no third Samurai, right. as you know. And the Genesis version is totally different. So if you are, if you play this and you're hungry for more, uh, you can get some satisfaction, probably, from giving the Genesis version a, a, a whirl. I saw that the Genesis version has a chick Samurai to go along with That's your guy true. Samurai, mm-hmm. which is kind of neat. But from what I could tell, and I watched extensively both versions. I did not progress past the first level, so maybe it gets awesome later on, but I was not impressed with the first level. I wasn't overly impressed with the very first part of this game either. Mm -hmm. This is a... Why they started you like that... In fact, this right here, he's at the point where I got to where you fight this skull. Um, The the first level of both these games didn't look that impressive. In fact, the caveman level was was, sort of a, a ridiculed... Uh, on the Genesis, from mm. what I read, but I mean, it, sure, it gets better. And this, again, in this game, you're going into like a future city at some yeah. point. You're in a future. And Japan. that's you know, that's the problem with so many of these media games is the the developers left the best stuff for ninety percent of the people that would never get there. Yeah, the games because are so for hard. example, the jetpack parts well into the right. game. Now th- there is saving grace on this because there are level codes, and I'm sure they were found out and published soon after the game yeah, was released. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, um, I. 
this game is a real for the first game of the year. This is gonna as an early contender for my game of the year. This is a real stunner to me. Uh, when you said we were doing this, when I was un, I wasn't super excited because that's just not what it was. You've never been real excited. You say that every week. Well, I, no, I am excited sometimes. <laughs> when I heard we were doing this, I was. Look, at, I mean, we didn't even do first Samurai, so it, it told me it's like, wow, the first one must really be bad. Now we're doing the sequel, and that's what it told me. We didn't, we skipped right over that one, but I mean, between the the moving platforms, the movable stuff. The, the, I can't get into how many awesome puzzles are in this. They're amazing amounts of puzzles, aren't there, Boat? I mean, they are really astounding. Like you said, for the first game, we're getting 2019 off to a great start. Yeah. You know, short I'll, list of the game of the year right here. I guess just to summarize, I'm going to go on all day. I highly recommend this. Now, I know a lot of people think this game is hard, and it's not easy, but it's nowhere near as hard as some of the games we've played. Oh, no, no. And you, and know, you, you feel can, like you've got a fighting chance. Plus, you can be a content tourist by using the level select yeah. code. You yeah. know, I can, for, I can forgive any amount of difficulty if I can jump around levels. Now, I will say, there that amongst the problems of this game, we've m- t- mentioned a couple of them, including the sword and, uh, and the controls. Uh, th- this game, on certain levels, the enemies just swarm. Mm-hmm. They never stop. Yeah. They never go away. They're always coming back. They yeah. always that, that, That's sort of the... Uh, Again, first level, right out of the gate, I, that's nothing I didn't like about it. I was yeah. like, oh, look at this. These enemies don't ever go away. That's sort of the de facto of so many of these uh, computer games is to up the difficulty. They just set the monsters on infinite swarm, yeah. you know, infinite spawn. Yeah, yeah. Something else that I will say I didn't like was uh, one, thing you, one of your constant targets are these like floating pots or something and for the dark for the longest time you think that you can jump on these things they don't, even, I, don't I would not have picked that i don't think i don't know why they were in there to be honest with you they're sort of unnecessary uh this game is teeming with secret levels tons of them in their boat and uh tons of secrets tons of secret yeah. warping i mean, I mean there there are so many cool things we could talk about this game the rest of the night yeah, yeah. yeah. so just go out and play it everybody and i, I have a feeling me and boat we're gonna have to get on with this as a two-player tandem we haven't yeah. done an amigos play together for a while that's true put it that's on the true. list boat so what did the what did the press of the time have to say about second samurai well it got pretty decent reviews uh the people over at lemon uh give it an 8.16 again high praise uh, Amiga Computing gave it a 91. Amiga Down Under, love that one, 85. Amiga Format 91. Amiga Power 90. Uh, CU Amiga 83 and the 1, 87. So nothing below an 83 mm-hmm. or an 81. Uh, and I would put this game firmly in the A category, a yeah. high A. I, I would mean, give I this game an A too. How, I, I, you, I would love someone to explain to me why. Super Frog and Zool get all the press, and I've never heard of this. Yeah, I'm begging someone to That's, tell me what's going on. That is, that is just like Yo Joe never got any love either. Right. Here's another one; it's getting no love. Well, we started a new thing this week, Aaron, on on the Discord. Um, I invited our Discord participants to uh, submit two sentence reviews. Some people became more long winded, and I've edited their review down to two sentences. Those are my people. <laughs> um, Barkbit says. Our- uh, using shift for changing special items is not the best, and it's easy to set them off by mistake, holding the fire button too long. Hard game, even on easy, 7 out of 10. Jason Warren says, a great-looking two-player beat-em-up that didn't totally want to make me throw my controller through the screen. <laughs> uh, J- Duncan Stiles says, continues the tradition of difficult Amiga platformer games, but one that rewards trial and error and on occasion dumb luck. Chris Fold says, Great graphics, decent sound, nice controls, all let down by what is becoming typical Amiga-style level design and difficulty. Being left without a weapon at key points is not a challenge. It's just bad design. That's that is a valid point there. Uh, Graham says, I can understand why this game is so popular, but I just can't get into it. The visuals are greatly improved over First Samurai, and it does control better, but I find this game more frustrating. And finally, Pixels at Dawn says, Another very difficult and quite weird platformer. Good fun, but the fact you can lose your primary weapon with so many enemies everywhere is a killer. I shouldn't be left having to kick a dragon in the head to kill it. That's what I did. <laughs> that, 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 they mirror us quite quite a lot in, in, those, in those looks. Yeah, so thank you, uh, our Discord folk, for uh, submitting those reviews. All right, Aaron. How does the Second Samurai, if you're looking to procure a copy of the Second Samurai on eBay, what can you expect to pay? A lot. Mm. <laughs> I was surprised how much it cost. Let me go to my eBay zone here. Uh, da, da, da. Boy, you had caught me off guard there, Boat. Hold on one second. Here we go. So, there are no U.S. copies of this. Mm. I'm guessing this didn't get a U.S. Yeah. release. Uh, 
that may be a reason why you don't hear so many people talking about it. Right. You know, in the same Zool and Super Frog breath. So if you're in the UK, uh, you can get a box copy of this, but you're gonna be, and these are sold 50, 60 bucks. All right. Uh, in France, there's I think there's one for something for 70 bucks. And the discs even cost between around 15, 20 bucks. Oh, wow. Now get this. Someone on eBay right this minute has a sealed copy of this up for sale, 108 bucks. So if you need it sealed, but I mean, it's a, it is, of course, it's a Psygnosis game that's going to jack the price up. It looks pretty good, uh, but, uh, you know, that stuff ain't cheap, brother. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Aaron, um, before we get out of here, I just want to remind everybody that um, if you are a Patreon supporter and you're listening to this right now and you're not on Discord, you need to get on Discord. If you missed the invite link that I sent out way back, uh, send me a message on Patreon and uh, I will send you another one. We want to get more people involved on these uh, user reviews. And just, it's always a good time over on Discord. Yeah, we're getting new people like all the time. It's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, Aaron, this is a, a new year, a new Patreon song challenge. All right. Uh, so uh, we didn't have one last week, so we had our New Year's celebration. So we're starting the new year off right. If you know this song, then send me an email at john at amigospodcast.com and I will announce you as the winner on our next episode. <clears throat> Retro Man Cave Tim Drew, Daniel Williams, Robert Edgerton III, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Edder, Rob O'Hara, Howard Nibs, Matthew Larimore, Andy Craig, Sean Zo, Darren Lomax, Colin 419, Bark Bid, Roland Burke, Andrew Monks, Joe the Zombie, John Cook, Dan Ross, Leaf Kelland, Alan Kebab, Chicote Level Lord, John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricky DeRocher, Creepy Dead, Wolfie, CT, Slow, Norris, Stephen, Sorgard, Mortensen, Edvin Helen, Blindo 75, Christopher Hassel, Ravi Abbott, Chris Folds, Dreamcatcher, Lauren Giroux, Graham Vebke, Bryn Dowdy, Lane Denson, Adam Battersby, O'Brien's Retro and Vintage, Gary Huckasee, Brian Jones, mm -mm -mm. Paul Harrington, Duncan Styles. Alan Kebab, Anthony Jarvis taped from the crib, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, THT, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy Humberstad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Colchis and Warns, Pixels at Dawn, and Kill Bjorn Barman. Next week, Aaron, we're gonna play Nitro. I was just in Nitro the other day. It's a game based on the city of Nitro in West Virginia. Wow. The armpit of the United States. <laughs> hey, wait yeah. a minute now. Now, wait a minute. Nitro's on the comeback trail. They got a very nice World War I museum over there. They've got a very nice town square. You shouldn't be bad mouthing Nitro. They're trying. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. Aaron. Um, so we're playing Nitro. We're going to play Nitro. You got it. Yeah. So I think it's probably a racing game. Uh, but it could be. It, it could, could be, be blowing stuff up. Yeah. It could be uh, a game based on Nitro. The uh, popular uh, wrestling series. Yeah. Monday Night Nitro. Oh, man. I've played games based on that. It's not, they're not good. Yeah. 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 They're, they're bad. All right. Well, guys, thanks as always for watching. We always record this show uh, around 5.30 ish every week on YouTube. Um, you can uh, check us out live just like the folks here in the YouTube chat Pixels of Dawn, Edvin Helen, Duncan Styles, and uh, Andy Davis. The future was 8 bit Trey Guard 1982, Ravi Abbott, Necronom, Paul Harrington. Thank you guys so much. And Ricky DeRocher, thank you so much for hanging out with us live on the chat. You always make it fun. Uh, guys, have a great week. Keep playing the Amiga. Until next week, adios. adios.